Welcome back to Woodhill Park. Thanks for joining me again. This is just a quick update just to show you what I've been doing just lately. At present I've been working on my preservation engine shed and uh, sort of preservation line I suppose you might call it. But uh, I'm just in the uh, sort of process of ballasting and weathering of the tracks and this also will become extra storage for the layout at this end it's a bit disjointed it's not going to be sort of anything that's going to be prototypical really but uh, yes I use the word prototypical but uh, not going to be that realistic but uh, I just uh, need some more, more storage space plus I fancy uh, running the odd steam excursion so this is just a video to show you what I've been doing lately so this is how I've been getting on some ballast in my preservation yard I've used my fine ballast which I'm I'm trying to use up because I don't like the fine I found it it moves about too much when you you add the PVA to it even if you pre-soak it with IPA the ballast tends to drift about a lot more because it's so light and to be honest I think it's too fine but uh, I've got a load so I'm trying to use it up so what I've done is I'd use it I tried to use it up in the yard for the pre preserved railway line that I'm sort of putting together just an excuse to run some steam engines really but uh, I've had it drying with a fan and it's a couple of days now it's been down and it's it's not completely hard but it it's on the way to being hard so this is the best time to, to check your points and make sure your points and turnouts aren't stuck in place because the glue's not completely gone off so you can still move the ballast quite easily and free up your points but whatever you do don't force them so I use a scalpel to get between the rails and sleepers and pull out any bits of ballast that are jamming up the movement so I go through doing all that and once I'm happy they're all moving freely I start to clean the track and uh, I use a track rubber but it's not really it's not an official track rubber it's a uh, it's a very fine rubber that you would use in industry for rubbing down metals so you don't scratch them and that's what it does it doesn't scratch it. they're so fine they don't scratch the rails up so you don't have so much problems problems with the oxidization because you're not increasing the surface area with scratches so I don't use it all the time but when I want to clean PVA and uh, paint off the rails this is what I use and uh, you probably would have seen or you're going to see a picture of the ones I use they're readily available you can get them on Amazon and places like that but uh, they're much better than track rubbers because they're not as not as coarse they're really fine in fact you can get a finer one than this and they come in different colours to denote what um, 
coarse nest they are really. And this is, I think, a medium. You can get um, a sort of a browny one, which is even finer. And the finer they are, the less damage they do. But they will still take off paint and PVA off the railheads and do a very good job of it. So, and once once that's been done, and uh, I'm going to vacuum up in a minute. So, I think that's what I'll do next: get the vacuum out and get the loose bits of PVA and stuff that are come off the rails and any ballast that still, even though it's loose, might jam up, uh, jam up the uh, turnouts. So, a bit, a bit of vacuuming. As the uh, ballast is not completely dry, it's dry enough that uh, any of the ballast that's glued down shouldn't move. I use the vacuum cleaner on a very low setting and only go over with a rough pass just to get rid of any loose bits and as it's very fine it should lift quite easily even with a, a very sort of minimal amount of vacuuming so that's what I'm going to do right now the vacuuming is done between the blades of the points or turnouts I use a bit of very fine emery paper this bit's worn out pretty much uh, but uh, you don't need much and I I just trap it between the blades and then pull it backwards and forwards to clean either side of the blade of the, the turnout like that and the same over the other side so even though you may not be relying on them it's still nice to clean them up and just ensure electrical continuity because you will get PVA glue that goes down there and insulates between the switch blades or the points but it's a very fine memory doesn't doesn't really damage anything but it will clear clean off any bits of PVA so I go through doing all that and then you want to put something back on the rails to stop uh, the tarnishing of the, the rail heads again they'll go black very quickly now you've rubbed off any sort of coating you had on them and uh, it was Charlie at Chadwick Model Railway that made me look at this stuff but uh, I now use this all to the camera, it's not a very good this Inox MX3 liquid and uh, God, camera right it uh, it doesn't conduct but it ensures good conductivity uh, between itself and the rails and the wheels of the the train or the loco and you don't need much at all and it just prevents any tarnishing on, on the rails so I've got a cloth here that has been soaked in it and it doesn't dry out this stuff so that the cloth is all you need you don't need lots of it because if you're you're using traction tires it'll make them swell up so that's the only downside to it but this stuff you don't even need to put a sort of a liquid layer on it just a wipe with the damp cloth in this stuff is enough just to coat the, the rail heads and stop them uh, getting oxidization on them so literally i'll just get a cloth that's impregnated with it earlier and then just rub over the rails and that'll be enough to stop the oxide appearing on the rails so you can then put that between the switch blades and trap it and also coat the area between the switch blades at the point to stop them tarnishing so it's just a case of running an impregnated rag over everything 
And once you do that, it lasts for ages before you get any tarnishing. So you just put back a, a protective layer on the railheads. I mean, eventually I'll be uh, weathering the track because I do the weathering after I've uh, done all the ballasting and everything. It's just the way I do it. It's just my way. People do various things in different various ways, but I found that's the way I like to do things. Do it in situ once I've finished ballasting. But uh, but because. I can use it meanwhile and it won't tarnish just by rubbing this over because you, you wouldn't want to put loads of this everywhere because obviously if you're ever going to you know spray over it with an airbrush like I'm going to because it's a lubricant <laughs> you know the, the paint's not going to stick is it so so if you just put it on the rails with a damp cloth where you don't want the paint to stick anyway it will uh, not give you any problems when you weather as well. Might even make it easier for you to get the paint off. But meanwhile you can run the trains again with uh, good electrical contact. So yeah just wiping everything around with this is enough. Brilliant stuff. Yeah can't can't believe all the years I struggle cleaning track. This stuff is excellent. I think you can get it from places like DCC Concepts, if I remember. That's what was uh, said on Charlie's channel. But uh, brilliant stuff. I'm glad I watch his uh, his videos. Once that's all done, and so I can start running the trains again. And then the next step will be to weather it. Uh, that'll be a little way ahead. But, uh, I, I clean all my track but the same way. Obviously I don't put a rubber over it unless I've got paint or glue on it. But uh, going over with a, a cloth with this Inox MX3 is uh, all you need around the rest of the track. I may use a, a, a pad on a, a wagon to go round underneath the hidden parts but other than that I just use a, a damp rag which is damp with this stuff anyway to go over the, all the rails on my layout and uh, it lasts for weeks if not months to be honest and uh, it, you know you can put it between the blades of the points like I said Everything sort of goes to help making your, your layout run really well, and it, and it does with this stuff. It also goes on the wheels of the bocos and continues just to give you very good electrical contact. So, yeah, can't shout enough about this stuff. Absolutely brilliant. Right, it's the next day now. I've uh, let all that dry. I had uh, a six inch fan blowing on it overnight and that has uh, pretty much completely dried it. You know, it's a little bit soft here and there. But uh, at the moment I'm just picking off bits that are interfering with the, uh, the wheels of the trains. No code, should I say. But, uh, I'm quite satisfied with the way that's dried. That's just come out pretty good. And uh, bear in mind, I think uh, various people do oil kits and spillage kits. I just thought this might work, and it, it's come out to my my way of thinking. It's just fine ballast, grey fine ballast, mixed with uh, PVA 
and then add in a, a black pigment from Vallejo, just powdered pigment. And uh, yeah, I think that's good enough for me. That's uh, a nice cinder bed. Obviously, some more detailing to be added to it, but uh, come out pretty well, I think. Managed to get uh, the logos running smoothly over it again. Takes a bit of cleaning up, and getting rid of the PVA from different parts of the rails. But yeah, it's running okay now. So next, really, is to possibly rust up the rounds a little bit um, I'm gonna just pick out bits here and there but then uh, maybe a <coughs> bit of airbrushing I think on the rest of it because that's going to be the messiest part of the layout because that's where the majority of the steam engines are going to be sitting and maintained so that the rest of the uh, sidings will just be sort of lightly weathered really just to give them sort of a look of a bit of usage really as I've been saying I need to rust up the rails on the inside of them and uh, just maybe a, a very light bit of weathering with the airbrush but I don't think it's going to need much it's uh, quite random and well, pretty good result I think I'll also be adding some bits of grass and weed and stuff as you know nature starts growing in between things that don't get used very often so it's quite common to see weeds and grass growing between sort of sort of tracks that's not used that often really. So I'll have a go at doing sort of that sort of thing, adding a bit of nature here and there. be uh, replacing these buildings I mean they're just there to give me an idea of size and how much room I've got between tracks and stuff but uh, I've uh, invested in a, a signal box that hopefully will look better than that and uh, I've also got a couple of bits for my birthday that my wife bought me so I've, I've now got some more doing some uh, fine detailing you know, one's a forklift and the other bits are pallets with bits and pieces on so they're going to take a, a bit of time up painting so save them for a rainy day I think so I'll be adding more detail here and there and uh, got a handy handy drinks mat as well so a few bits and pieces that uh, 
I wasn't expecting, <laughs> but nevertheless, quite handy. This side of the layout hasn't progressed very much. I've only just got things stored here, really, and a rough idea of what I'm going to do, which uh, either a t town scene or maybe just a, a woodland on a hill with tunnels going under it. As you can see, some of the storage goes under there from uh, the preserve line, just to give me some longer sidings. But, uh, I'll try and make that somewhat believable, but I'm not too worried really. It's, it's all about storage rather than sort of realism at this end of the layout really. This end of the layout is a bit disjointed, but nevertheless, what, what I do, uh, work on I'll try and make look realistic. So I've got to do more down that end as well and because the uh, the radius is quite a tight curve. It's tight a, a very tight curve going into there. I was going to have some buildings in the way so you can't see the carriages and loco going round looking somewhat on a you know an unrealistic curve really so I'm just going to have some buildings here and just clutter it up so that the, the, the trains go past it and then appear in the yard down here which uh, I plan to add a lot more detail to probably a, a brick wall in front of all this and lots of different bits and pieces and I've got this tunnel entrance to sort out and this isn't going to be here this is just here just to give me an idea of what buildings I could clutter up the area with but uh, I'll try and do a believable tunnel entrance into a, a bit of wasteland above but this possibly will be a car park for the uh, Preserve Railway line with a good, sit, good shed sitting there and uh, a bit of greenery and possible a bit more scenery there at the moment the scenery just ends at that point but I know my liquids and everything are in the background but you know I've got to come up with some ideas for that. Uh, put that back there for a minute. And that's it really. I'm going, I've got the, the lines at the back that I need to ballast, which I'm thinking of doing it today actually. Possibly later today. So it can dry for the next few days. They're the main two lines, the up and down line of the upper level. And then you've got the level that runs between the down, the uh, lower level, and upper level goes behind the scenery and dips down to the lower level. So I've got all that to ballast and then work out what I'm going to do with the tunnel entrance there. And as I said before, work out what sort of um, scenery I want on top of this area here. Jeez, it's not going to be entirely believable, as I said, but just something just to finish it off. I've also still got all the scenery down this side to sort of develop and work on. I've still got some turnouts, well quite a few turnouts that I fancy motorising so before I can do anything here I've still got to get underneath the TMD and put on, put the solides on the points. They're all ready to go but I need to sort of spend a bit of time doing them before I can do 
this part of the layout. I plan to probably just have a long cutting down here. Maybe some of it with retaining wall and some of it just sloping banks either side. And uh, I've got a canal that I'm going to work on once all the scenery starts coming together down there. So it's going to disappear underneath the top level. Bit of a canal scene. So, and I've got a lot of other stuff I'm trying to come up with ideas for improvements on the rest of the layout. So, never ending work, but that's modelling and that's what makes it so so interesting and such a good hobby. just bought uh, a new water tower which is a Hornby one and I bought it from a, an online retailer and I think it's really good value for money I think it cost me £26 for this resin model it's really good and I've got a, another buy of a pre-made signal box. A signal box is a Midland signal box which possibly fits in my, with my layout and the water tower is a GWR water tower, Great Western, which doesn't really fit but the story is this is a preserved rail yard and these guys are very good at uh, scrounging around and finding bits and pieces so they've rebuilt this water tower and they've had it transported here so they obviously got a bit of money as well but uh, it's been rebuilt and so it's been recovered from another area which would have been uh, Great Western so that's a story I'm telling so <laughs> there's going to be a real mixture of stuff when it comes to this bit of steam era that's on my layout because it is a just a preserved rail yard really which allows me to run excursions on my 1980s layout but I thought it was a particularly good value this Great Western Water Tower. Um, uh, this pre-made ratio kit 
that somebody has made already, just made to a very good standard. And I think I only paid £14 for it. I mean, well, it's not worth attempting to make it yourself, really, for that. It's been made very really well. But it does look a bit small against this water tower. <laughs> but they're both supposed to be double O. So. Well, there's a helicopter coming now, so. I'll uh, stop and come back with something in a minute while this helicopter goes over. Well, I, I didn't come back after that because I, I went away for the weekend and uh, had a few other things to do. But when I did come back, I thought I'd get on with this section again. And uh, I've now got the airbrush out as everything's dry and uh, weathered the track and even weathered the buildings a little bit. Tried to sort of blend them in a little bit more. So it's now looking a little bit grimy, really. And the uh, water tower and uh, signal box and a few other bits and pieces. I give them a little bit of a weathering as well. Just they look too clean. I've also got to find out where I'm finally going to place them and build up the ballast around them and sort of blend them in, I think. But, uh, yeah, not to mention the coal retainers over there, or what you want to call them, coal bunkers. They uh, they need sorting out. But uh, yeah, I've been round with the weather, weather in the track and items with the airbrush, uh, carefully keeping the, the paint out of the points with blue tack and. Uh, it's come on another step really. It's starting to come together. Yeah, obviously more detailing, I need to add some nature as it's just a blank canvas now. But uh, another stage on. This is probably where I'm going to leave this uh, video and call it uh, part one maybe because uh, it's getting a bit of a long video plus I'm not sure if I'll get that much done in the, the coming few days. I'm also off to Ali Pali to the Model Railway Exhibition possibly on the Sunday so my weekend will be taken up with that and a few other things I'm doing so I don't know how much further I'll actually progress so I think I'm gonna sort of do a part two to this as I add buildings in, blend them in and add nature and other stuff to it and improve the uh, realism of this, this area so uh, until next time, I shall uh, say goodbye and that's it for now, until my next update. Cheers for watching, thanks for subscribing and uh, see you in the next one.